Happy Sundays with Cinnamon. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I hope everyone else is. <laughs> and that doesn't mean things aren't uh, all over the place in my life. It just means I'm making it okay. Aww. That's what, that's, uh, we were just talking before we turned on the camera about, well, what will it be today? And it just shows up in this moment that it'll be about this moment and how when life shows up, you have to show up with your heart or go down with the ship because life is constantly, practically moment to moment, offering you an opportunity to uh, make yourself afraid of it. Mm -hmm. I spent uh, yesterday hours in um, a chemotherapy clinic, I suppose you would call it, with my dear friend, who has uh, ovarian cancer for uh, third stage, I believe, and it, it's close enough <laughs> that that it's it's of great concern. It doesn't have to be a source of taking yourself down. It doesn't have to be bemoaning the cancer. If you want to create peace, it has to be welcome visitor. Come on in and sit down and let me manage you. Ooh, I love that. Because this is my life and I have you. You do not have me. Remember who invited you in. On whatever level I invited you in and only God knows why, here you are and here we are together. And just keep in mind that I am managing this situation. So let's stop the camera. Okay. Because I know a lot of people are going to say... <laughs> what are you talking about? I invited cancer in my life. Okay, then that goes back. We've talked before about the contract, that we create a contract with life. And, and people who create cancer, I have such awe. And, and you created it yourself. It, I created it myself. And, and I, I, I loved that I made choices not to scare myself. And... And I was very aware that other people could, so I really didn't broadcast the fact that it was present because I wanted to use all my energy to deal with the visitor. And, and ultimately, you know, of course, I, I let everyone know. It's just that in your process, you have to make choices as to what serves you best regardless what anyone would say. And one of my children said to me, "If you, don't ever do that again. If you have a serious illness, I want to know about it. And in that moment, it was so totally appropriate to say, absolutely. It just came in, I've done this. So, so you're requesting now that I do it with you if... And I say, God forbid, because I don't want to go through any more serious illness, and I will if I do. It's just about accepting the what is and knowing that if it shows up, because we forget that contract. If it's a part of the contract, okay, now you're going to go in and you're going to forget it. And life will remind you over and over. What about now? What about now? Remember the contract? And you either say, no, I didn't sign that contract. Or you say, oh, that's right, the contract. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, there are many people who are turning this off right now because they just do not want to associate themselves with that way of seeing things. And I'm okay with that. I, this is what has served me well over the years. And, me too. And people who I have worked with, it served them well. And they've watched this process unfold so that they can see that it's not blah, 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 just a bunch of guru talk. So that's what I have to Well, do. this it's I, I suppose the uh, subject's going to be about cancer because I just came back from my... Uh, cancer appointment that I go to every six months. And that reminds me I need to get blood tests. <laughs> I forgot. That's how in the moment I am. Yeah. And uh, I went to the appointment and in the first, it was the first time in 20 years that my heart wasn't beating faster. I, I just completely was in 
great surrender. Mm -hmm. And knowing that whatever showed up was for my spiritual growth. And of course, I preferred to not get a diagnosis. I say amen to that. Amen. I mean, who, who's going to say yeah. I want cancer? Yeah. Although I just know that whatever shows up, I can handle it, and I'm going to use it. You want to be to, really strong in your spirit. So in that sense, you want it. And, yes. Yeah. And, of course, you don't want and, it. And when you're done. A grand you're contradiction. <laughs> Bye-bye, cancer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I would like to interject here because I have a beloved friend who is I've taken on as a sister in Brazil who was just diagnosed days ago with multiple myeloma. And with all my heart, I want her to hear me saying, this visitor is going to be reminded not just by you, Luisa, by me and your family and Murillo and everyone involved in this, that you're the boss of this. Mm -hmm. And and that's what you we may want. have cancer, but it doesn't have you, that's baby. That's it. That's it. So so just love to you, honey, and and experience the spirit of fearlessness that is in you, because with every challenge, you've been given equal courage to face it. Yeah, I love you. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure tears are rolling down her cheeks yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. That that She's message. My dear one, yeah, and he as well. Her husband is is really, I uh, he he is so very challenged and so very up for it. Do you hear me, little brother? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And so, with the decisions of chemo or not, um, I I wanted to speak about that because last time we had spoken about cancer, it could have been misrepresented what you were saying about chemo. Just because oh, yeah. you didn't choose chemo right. uh, doesn't mean that chemo's wrong or a wrong choice Absolutely or any not. of that. Absolutely, it not. is a choice to be made from your heart, though. And most people do make the choice from fear, a yes, fear place. Yes, yes. And that's, that's, that's what we're talking about that's here. That's my only point about chemo. Don't do chemo because you're afraid not to. Do it because you have made a decision that you're willing to stand on to go in that direction. And then keep standing on it. Yes. If you've made it from your mind, you'll, oh, what if it doesn't go right? Uh, why did I do this? You'll regret at some point. Because that's what fear does. It entices you and then it says, oh yeah, but what if? And so you want to just know that you're coming from your core, that what I know is this is for me. Mm -hmm. It may not be for cinnamon, and it is for me. And I'll tell you, cinnamon will be on the sidelines saying, you go girl. You have done things uh, in your treatments. Didn't you have a... Um, a plate or something in the back? I, I have everything. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is I had to make a decision, and I wrote a blog about it, and it actually was featured on a website called The Daily Love. And I wrote a blog about the decision and how much I was in my mind with the decision I needed to make on whether to radiate my cancer in my eye mm -hmm. or to remove the eye. And... I mean, even thinking about that decision, I can scare myself with if I wasn't me. Yeah, exactly. You know, you what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. And I had to surrender to my heart and the process of that. And it was one of the best experiences of my life because in that moment of surrender, God gave me the perfect song on my iPod. And it was Daniel by Elton John. And it said, Daniel, you're my brother. You are older than me do you still feel the pain of the scars that won't heal your eyes have died but you see more than i daniel you're a star in the sky and i like to sing whether you like to hear me or not <laughs> and um and not wow leaning on the good opinion of others <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was in that moment it was just the most magical moment that I knew it didn't matter whether I could see or not. Of course, that would be a preference. What mattered is, is that I see from my heart. 
Just like what Keller, Helen Keller says. Exactly. That I'm seeing from my heart. That, that, that well, we're, tell them what Helen Keller said. <laughs> if I can remember something. She said, that which is real, you cannot always see with your eyes. Yes. And I just relaxed. I didn't have my answer, but I did know that the answer, uh, I, I was willing to receive the answer then because I wasn't serving fear. Mm. And sure enough, within a week, I knew to radiate. And that was two years ago. And I just saw my eye doctor and everything's great. And I've had vision and I'm not in pain. And it was the best decision I, I made for me. And if the cancer comes back or, or if it spreads or whatever, I know I made the decision from my heart and I will have no regrets. And that's the thing. When you know you're making a decision from your heart, not your mind, you can stand on that decision. You can stand on it and firm. And you won't create regret. And you won't create regret, regret. exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, thank you all. And if you have any questions, I'm starting to really encourage people to ask questions and I will do my best to answer them and if I am unwilling to pull up my divine wisdom I will call cinnamon <laughs> okay then <laughs> okay love, love you all thank love you, you so all. much for being with us bye-bye bye-bye